So you want to make a 3D music video or short film? Well, today I'm gonna map out my entire process while still trying to be beginner friendly. I've been a student of the music video space for like seven years at this point, and I've noticed a rising trend in using 3D graphics to create unique music videos. Let's hop into Blender and give it a shot. Our first goal here is to create an environment. For this, it helps if you jot down your ideas or use some whiteboard program to keep references readily available. If you don't know how to make an environment, I made a whole guide on this, which you can watch here. In that video, I mentioned enabling this landscape plugin, which comes with some nifty little presets. So you can easily create a canyon, a plateau, a river, for example, all just with a couple of clicks. If you want something more specific, you can go onto sites like Sketchfab or TurboSquid and download some 3D files and then import them into Blender to practice with. I'm going to do a mixture of both here. For my scene, I want to put a bunch of trees in the background. So I'm going to select the ground object and then I'm going to go to the particle settings. I'm going to click here to create a new particle system and then I'll download some 3D trees from Sketchfab or wherever. I'll import those back into Blender click back over to the particle system and change the particle emitter to object and select our tree. It's really that easy just to create a larger scale environment. Again, I've talked about this super in depth using particle systems as well as using geometry node systems to do this. So if you wanna learn more on that, go watch that guy. Our next step is texturing. Texturing in Blender, in my opinion, is a lot easier than in other 3D softwares. For one, if you're practicing by using those free models and those models include textures with the download, Blender can automatically load those in for you as long as you have the Node Wrangler plugin enabled. Once you've done that, you can just select the principal shader, click Control Shift T, highlight all of the image maps, and it's really as easy as that. Speaking of easy ways to make a video, the sponsor of today's video is an amazing asset for speeding up the entire process. Today's video is sponsored by Gling. Gling is a super intuitive AI assisted editing software. In the past, I've spent hundreds of hours removing all of these stutters or ums or sentences I've messed up while recording these videos over the year. Well, with Gling, I can easily edit my video all with the transcript right here. So for example, I have this clip where I completely stumbled over my words and for pose, we'll and for pose, we'll put this at, all I have to do is highlight what I want to remove, click here, and bam, perfectly fixed. And for pose, we'll put this at rest position. There's also other AI assisted tools like these auto captions here, which is an absolute godsend for quickly creating short form content. If you go up here to enhance, you can also add things like auto zoom transitions, as well as audio noise reduction, which is very nice. The other feature, which I absolutely love is this title generator. You see here, this is just called untitled project. Well, you can actually connect your YouTube channel and it'll analyze your titles and give you some great options to choose from. You can even automatically change the tone of the titles, which is very cool. All in all, very easy to use program with minimal UI. This is a great time saver for people that really want to pump out content. If you guys want to check it out, click the link at the top of my description. And now back to the tutorial. If you're making your own procedural texture, you need to understand the basic texture channels. For example, you can control how reflective an object is by adjusting the roughness. You can also add in a node like a color ramp and a noise texture, connect those all together, and now you have a custom roughness map with some greater control over how it's being applied. There's a lot of great videos out there explaining this in more depth, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. To keep things easy, I'm going to go over to the Quixel Megascans library and find a stone ground texture, and then I'm just going to use that Node Wrangler add-on to automatically apply that. Keep in mind here, we're using a simple plane and our texture is using displacement, so it's gonna look really weird and low poly. To fix that, we can subdivide the mesh either in edit mode or with a subdivision surface modifier. I want some variation in the texture, so I'm gonna click tab to go into edit mode, and then I'm gonna select all of the vertices on this side of the river that has all of our trees. Then I'm gonna make another texture, and this time load in a forest ground look, and then I'll click apply still in edit mode to add that texture to the area that we selected. So there's the basic texturing for our trees, the water, and the ground. Another thing you can do is use the sculpting mode tools in Blender. I wanna have a rocky overlook looking down on the river in trees. So I'm gonna switch into sculpt mode and make some adjustments just using the grab brush to shape it to my liking.
So our next step is to add in some lighting. If you're going for even a shred of realism, it's important to take your time lighting your scene. Again, references are really going to help here. You want to pay attention to where the light is coming from, as well as any shadows or reflections that are created from that light. A fun bonus tip is to watch actual cinematographer lighting tutorials. You can take what they're showing and apply that same theory to lighting things in 3D. Another shortcut I like to use is projecting light from an image. So you can do this by enabling the images as planes add-on and then importing in any image you want to use as a background. Next, go over to the shader editor, plug that image texture into the emission slot, and then bump up the power. Oh, and make sure you're in cycles when you do this so that you can actually see the light emitting onto other objects. If you're compositing backgrounds like this, you want to pay attention to how you can blend together each of the individual elements. In this case, I added some more trees to the horizon just to make the transition from 3D to 2D image a little bit less obvious. You can also add in something like fog to blend and make everything a little bit more atmospheric. This is super easy. You just want to make a cube and then go to the shader editor for that cube and load in a principled volume instead of the default principled BSDF. From there, you can mess with the density and add a tiny bit of emission to really make everything come to life. Next up is the character. Now, this is a subject which can get pretty in depth. I made a free guide here on making 3D characters using Daz, which is free. This is a great place to start. It really depends on what you want. If you want a super simple character just to test with, you can go to mixmo.com. There's a bunch of models as well as free mocap animation you can instantly download and bring into Blender. If you want more customization for the character, there's plugins for face textures. You can model things yourself. You can rig it yourself. You can animate. You can add clothing simulations, etc., etc. I'm actually in the process of uploading a full character creation without modeling course. So if you're really interested in this subject, check out my website down below. That course will hold your hand through the entire process. Next up, we need to animate our camera. This is a big one. You don't want to waste any time rendering everything out just to realize after the fact that the speed or timing of everything is messed up. Admittedly, I've done this a lot. My best tip to fix this is to do all of your animating in this preview shading mode so that the software isn't lagging trying to render or process everything. This will give you a more accurate look at the speed of everything and how the camera flows and moves. The biggest tool you have for animating the camera is the graph editor. You want to start by making a simple keyframe animation. You can do that by going over to the object properties, clicking over here to set a keyframe, scrolling to where you want the animation to end, adjust the value and set another keyframe. In my case, I'm just going to make the camera move towards the character. Once you've done that, switch over to the graph editor and now you have custom spline control over the movement. You can also add in things like modifiers, uh, like noise, for example. This will give your camera a more handheld and less robotic look. Again, if you want to get more in depth with this, I just made a 10 camera animations guide. If you want to make a 3D music video, I highly recommend you check that out. It's going to go into the basics as well as some more creative looks that you can use. So waiting for a render to finish is not fun. So let's go over to our render settings and fix things up. If you're rendering an animation, anything above 100 samples is going to be complete overkill. These days, denoising is really good, so we can bump those samples down pretty low and you're going to get some solid renders. If the denoising is getting out of control, you can try messing with the denoise threshold or you can try rendering at a higher resolution to keep the finer details. The only thing you need to know is A, set a folder location where you want to render and then B, click render animation. Also, before you do that, do a little check in your object bin. A lot of the time I hide the visibility of an object in the viewport, but I forget to hide the visibility in the render. I'll wake up the next morning just to realize my render is completely ruined and it forces me to restart. Now, if you want, you can render out your animation as an MP4 straight out of Blender. I don't like to do this though. I like to render out as a PNG or TIFF sequence and then bring those clips into my editing software of choice, which for me is After Effects. So to do that, in After Effects, I right click in the project bin, I go to import multiple files, I select that folder that has all of my animation renders, click import and then click done. And now my animation is ready to be converted to a video. I can do all of my post work or coloring or whatever I want to do from here. All in all, I think it's a pretty simple process, but there's so much room to build on it and make things as complex as you want it to be. Again, I've mentioned all of these guides that I've made on each of those specific little things. So I highly recommend you check those out. Links to all of those will be in the description. Other than that, have a nice week and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.